You know who nails her auditions every time? This lady! <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel and to another um, do your chores while I talk your ear off. This is your cue to get over to a chore you've been putting off. Uh, unloading the dishwasher, that's a good one. Folding your laundry, cleaning your bathroom, whatever it may be. Uh, head over there now and let me just tell you some tales of times that were rather rough. I mean, you clicked on this video, I guess I should start. Courtney, you ready? Me. You clicked on this video, clearly you're interested in the subject matter. Either you are an actor yourself and you like need to commes commiserate, commiserate, um, or you just like stories of dark times. Either way, congratulations, you've entered into a strange world. Um, <laughs> so let's just dive in, I guess, right? Um, I have many jobs, as you know, I've been here on YouTube forever, um, but while I've been doing YouTube, I'm a trained actor. I went to college and trained in theater, and I was like, I'm going to be an actor, and then I came out here and I sort of fell into this world of YouTube, and you know, my career and path has taken me in different directions that I couldn't have even imagined, and I'm so grateful for uh, specifically voiceover stuff, my ability to write my book, my ability to be here with you on a weekly basis. So I want to just, I guess, preface all that because when I like tell people, well, I don't tell people, but when like my mom says like, oh, she's an actress, it's like, all right, people's first question is then like, well, what have I seen you in? And I'm like, it's complicated. It's like the Facebook relationship status. It's complicated. Um, so I guess I just want to come into this with an awareness that like my situations are all very different and obviously I'm on this trajectory that's different. So no um, story is, no story is, I was going to say unique, but it was ever the opposite of that. Everyone's journey in the world of acting is very different. Also, just generally speaking, and I've talked about this so much, I... I'm a very anxious person and I have social anxiety and when it comes to like being judged or like um, doing something right, I have a really hard time. I feel like I need to be perfect and so that's definitely added to my stress when it comes to auditions. So my situation is very individual in that um, it comes with an added bonus of anxiety, which I know a lot of actors have, but that sort of amps up the dramatics of these stories. So I had mentioned that I wanted to do stories about bad auditions, and actually I got this idea from someone who suggested it, which is a great suggestion. Um, and I've had many, but I also feel like I've blacked out a lot of them. Like I've done so many auditions over the course of my years. Um, even before I went to college, I was auditioning throughout college, auditioning in college situations and then afterwards. So, um, it's kind of weird when I sit back and I'm like, Oh, I can't remember that many of them. I think a lot of them have sort of just like swept under the rug, but there are a few that stick out to me like very clearly. The one very bad one that I remember, um, and you know, for every bad one, I've had many mediocre ones and many decent ones, maybe a few brilliant ones. Um, but for some reason, of course, the bad ones stick out for you. It's like the bad comments that like stick with you, even though there's many a uh, kind and wonderful, thoughtful comments. Um, so I do remember, I was set to do an audition at was it the Universal lot. It was, oh, CBS, CBS Radford lot. Um, I was set to do this audition and it was, I don't even remember. It was for a comedy. It was a TV show. It was, I don't know if it was a lead or like a, you know, co-star, whatever the case was. It was a lot of pages. Like, so you get your auditions usually at least a night before and you get to work on it and then you go in. This was before COVID. So nowadays everything's on tape, which for me is so much better uh, because I can like center myself. But like you go into these auditions in, in person and it's so intimidating. So I think it was like four pages, four or five pages. 
I get the email from the manager, the manager's assistant or agent's assistant, like sends me the sides. Sides are like the pages, the scenes that you're going to do. I work them through. I practice them. I'm like, all right, here we go. So then you show up to um, the studios and it's super intimidating because you're like literally at like CBS Radford, like where they shoot all the CBS shows, where they have all the sound stages. Like it's the thing, you know what I mean? And so you have to check in at the gate and there's people hustling and bustling around. People, they're in their like little golf carts riding around. It's like, okay, you have to like, it's such a game of mental gymnastics. First and foremost, like, yes, it is a game of like craft, you need to know your craft, you need to be on point, you need to be on your script, the whole thing. But I would say like the majority of it is a mental gymnastics because you can really psych yourself out. It's like going on a first date. It's like any interview, any situation like that, your nerves are at like maximum capacity. Even if you like, this is for me, even if I were to like tell myself it's not a big deal, like you've done this before or like your whole career doesn't like hinge on this. You've done this so many times before. You've had bad experiences before and you've, nothing bad has happened. You're still here, you're still auditioning. No matter what I would tell myself, I would still be so nervous. So I showed up and the thing that kills me about auditions is like you'll see like 15 other girls there all auditioning for the same part. A lot of times it's people you know or people you've seen previously in auditions um, in the waiting room. And so you're like in this hallway, at least at this particular casting agency. First and foremost, you have to figure out where you're going because the lot is huge. Then once you like figure it out, you're like, okay, I'm here. And then you see all the girls in the hallway and then you go, then you sign in and you see how many people go before you. Then you're in the hallway and you can hear everyone else auditioning, which is bonkers. Like they tell you to try to like, they tell you like in classes, it's like, just tune it out, like do your own thing. But it's so hard not to hear what the other person before you and before that is doing in the room so that gets in your head um, but I remember this specific one I signed in and I like they always have the sides there in case you didn't get them for some reason well this time I like okay let me just look down at the sides the sides that they had were an updated version like the script that was there for the audition was a different version than the version I had gotten and I had practiced my anxiety like went through the roof. I'm like, oh my God, I am not good at like working on the spot. Like I need preparation. Like I am not the girl that goes with the flow at auditions. So I start panicking. I like email my assist, my agent's assistant. And I'm like, oh my God, did you not get this? Like, like that's gonna help at that point. And so instead of focusing on the script and the changes, I just go into panic mode. And there's like no turning back from that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, at least for me, if you have any sort of anxiety, you know this. Like once you like go down the rabbit hole of thought, it's like there's no turning back. What I should have done in retrospect was either, like just be like, Lisa, you got this. It's not that complicated. Like just focus. You can figure this out. You know how to do this. Um, and or just left and like told the agent, like, I'm sorry, I'm not in the position to do this. And I prefer not to like, you know, really screw myself. I'd like to come back for this casting director because these casting directors, like any interviewer, they interview for a, a bunch of different projects, a bunch of different jobs, a bunch of different TV shows. So in theory, I like probably should have just excused myself and it wouldn't have been a big deal but I was like Lisa stick it out stick it out so I'm like trying I have a lot of girls in front of me so I know I have time and I'm trying my best to like learn the new lines but I'm just like so it's it's I'm so far gone my anxiety is like so far gone that like there's no turning back I should have known that about myself anyhow my name gets called and I go in there and when I tell you, first of all, the room was really nice. There was like, I want to say there was like five people in there, casting director, casting assistant, producer, whatever. And ooh, everyone was really nice. And hi, Jeff, I'm still filming, okay? Everyone was like really nice and um, very like, like welcoming. But when I tell you, I start the script and like, my hands, like no exaggeration, my hands were just like, brrr, like I'm so visibly shaken and visibly nervous and like, 
stumbling over the world. I mean, there's no, there was just like no coming back from it. And afterwards, I can't, I don't remember like if I did it once, if I did it twice. I don't remember if I finished it. But afterwards, like the room was like, just like silent and awkwardly like e. And I was like, oh, I've, um, I've had so much coffee this morning. So I'm just like so jittery. And they're like, okay, okay. Well, next time, maybe suggest that you just like take a deep breath and maybe like don't have coffee before coming. They knew like they, they were so sweet about it. And I feel like ultimately like they knew what was going on. They knew I was nervous. I should have just been like completely like forward with my feelings and been like, Hey, I didn't get these sides. I'm really nervous. I should have taken a few more moments before coming in here. But like when you're in the moment, you just like don't have the foresight to be able to do that. You know what I mean? So that one like specifically like really sticks in my head. Like I can see you guys know, I've talked about this before. I can't like remember what I did 10 minutes ago, but like that whole thing, I could see the hallway. I remember which girls were there. Like the whole thing is so specific and ingrained in my head. That being said, even after that terrible time, I still continued to get auditions afterwards. It wasn't like that like killed my career forever. You know what I mean? And that's something I try to like keep in my head as I proceed forward. It's like, even if you screw up royally it's not like that's it it's not like a one and done situation so keep that in mind for anyone out there trying to do this and or just like interviews in general it's like one bad one isn't going to kill you even like 10 bad ones which i had 10 bad ones uh after and before so that's one of those another one that i remember like so specifically was way before that i was doing auditions for um commercials which is a whole different beast I mean if you're not in this world or like entering into the space it's like very specific but you guys know you watch commercials there's so many of them and as opposed to like what I was saying before like a tv show where they have like maybe 20 girls come in like they kind of vet you before you come in for commercials they bring in it's like a cattle call they just like bring them in. They bring in like 50 people at a time. They don't know what they're looking for. It's like all ages, all sizes, the whole thing. Um, and so the, you know, and, and the variety of commercials that are out there are like the really big deal ones. Like, um, I don't know, like a crest commercial versus like the ones on cable TV that don't pay very much, but there's so many of them. You guys know you watch TV. Um, there's so many commercials. So I remember this one specific time where I can't remember like what it was for, but it was for like some like, you know, super cable, like no one would see it and or like internet commercial that no one would see. And the, for these commercial auditions, a lot of times there aren't scripts. Cause if you watch commercials, a lot of time people are just like my mean things. And then there's like a voiceover. This was for something so bizarre. And so something so off topic. What, do you want to tell your commercial audition stories? Cause yours are hysterical. What are we talking? We're talking about bad auditions. First of all, internet viewers, you wonder I know. what's going on that makes the corn so excited. The da da. It's me. Well, I was just about to tell like a horror story from a commercial audition, but you have the best one. I have many yeah. bad commercial audition stories. Tell like, there's one that's so good. The... <laughs> I need a little bit more specificity. Well, there's one I feel like where you like threw down the gauntlet and you were like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Like what was the... There were about nine or ten that made me feel that and then I finally did. There's one, here's one I never told you about it, I don't think. Okay, wait, I want to make sure that this is focused on you, so I'm going to... Focus it on Jeff. Okay. I think you're in focus. If not, you guys can watch me fold as he tells the story. Uh, one time, I got called in for an audition that was supposed to be taking place at a costume party. Like a Halloween costume party. Yeah. And if you're uninitiated, for some reason, you have to dress up in the outfit that you'll be in in the commercial. Yeah, they, it's like a costume contest. Commercial auditions are like, we could do a whole other video about that, but... So, you know, you're at the Jiffy Lube and a dinosaur comes and crushes your car uh, and you hide underneath it. And they'll make you act all that out, but you have to wear a red shirt. 
Yes. Or else they can't possibly see it. Yes. It's very, it's a very bizarre culture. One time I remember a bird had to fly me away and I had to pretend that I was being lifted away by a giant bird. But God damn it, if you don't wear the blue Best Buy shirt. You're never going to get the part. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, it was like, dress up like you're at a Halloween costume party. Yes. I had reached that point where I wasn't going to buy anything else anymore new. I'm not going to go out and buy anything. Sure. And all I had was the full Hall & Oates outfit. Oh. From a comedy show that I was doing at Groundlings where I was playing Daryl Hall. So I had a full pink 80s suit, a mullet, glasses. It was full on Hall & Oates. So I just wore that and I was like, this will do. Um... My dumbass agent got confused. Oh no. And in no way was it a costume audition. Oh no. So I showed up to a lobby of like a hundred actors dressed like Daryl Hall from Hall and Oates and sat there for like a good 20 minutes until they finally called us in. And in that moment, I realized that this is not the one that I was told. That's. And I still went for it. How'd it go? I did not book it. <laughs> That's horrendous. Yeah. yeah. 45 more minutes, I could keep going. Well, honestly, if you guys want to see a part two of this with both of us, that would be kind of fun. I just remember, like, my prompt for the commercial audition, like, basically, like, the director was there, and he was telling us to do things, like, pretend to break into a building. So, like, you would have to, like, my, it was, like, all my work. And, and it was so dumb. Like, the prompts were so dumb. Like, I'm all about mime work, space work, whatever. But, like, it got to the point where it was like the most embarrassing stuff ever. And I think I was just like at my wits end and I turned to the director and I was like, do you ever stop to think like, what are we doing with our lives? Like, this is messed up. And he's like, what? I'm like, this is messed up, right? Like, is this what you dreamt of? Like, I can't believe I said that. It's not in my personality type, but I thought I was kind of being funny because I was like, he has to know how absurd this was. And he was like, S he did not think it was funny. And like, in retrospect, like, it wasn't the most respectful thing to do, but I thought we were kind of being, like, chummy, like, so we both know this is, like, so dumb, right? But it didn't go over very well. <laughs> you, that makes me realize you were talking about the infamous Clamato audition. What does that mean? That's the one where I did my similar thing. And I never told yes. you about Clamato story. No, but you need to come here to make sure that you're in full focus, because this one, this is the one. This is the one where we, like, both kind of had similar experiences, although yours was, like, obviously a little bit more heightened and epic because you're Jeff and I'm like okay bye like I was like no. okay thanks be sure to book me like after like the most awkward interaction. It means of the two of us I'm more likely to burn the world to the ground. Well do tell. Um all right am I coming over? Yeah please come over here because I don't know what this camera is. Watch out Karen you're about to fall off the bed. She's so excited. She's Guys special edition here with Jeff. You know what Jeff? It's like you knew I'm folding some of your laundry so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. If you want me to fold your laundry, you just have to tell some stories. Hi, cutie pie. Welcome home. Hello. This is, uh, what's the title of this? Oh, um, I'm not sure. We're folding and telling stories. Folding and telling. Bad commercial auditions. Yeah. With guest Jeff. Um, you were reminding me of the infamous Clamato audition. Take a moment. If you don't know what that is, Google it. I don't know. Clamato is a beverage. Clam juice oh, that's right. and tomato. Clamato. I don't know why people like it. Some people do. It's a bloody mark, like a bloody I think mix. it's like you put booze in or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's a thing that exists. And I got an audition from the same crappy agent. Shout out if you're listening. Uh, that would be very bizarre and small worldish if they were. I doubt they'll remember this. Um, I just wish I could look down the camera and say their name. I wish I could. Um, so, if you want it, guys, yeah, you've got right. to get this video to 10,000 views. Yeah, then I'll do it. <laughs> uh, so I got this audition. Uh, it's that thing where they said, you have to be there at 10 a.m. And I was like, oh, I have some other things to do. Can I go in the afternoon? And they're like, you, you don't go in the afternoon to the Clamato audition. You oh, go at 10. this is a big deal. Yeah. So I moved everything around, and I got there on time. And then the people, you could clearly tell the people were like, yeah, just show up whenever. So already I was mad. Uh, and I walked into the room, and as... <laughs> I overheard Lisa saying, they kind of walk you through the action. You have a general idea of what it is. It's not really a, a solid script. You yeah, it's not like it a TV audition, Correct. which is a whole different ball So game. they were like, all right, you're a young man at the party. And there was like a girl in there, and then me and the camera guy. Uh, and there was people watching, obviously, in the other room. That's, if you don't know that, they watch on monitors. Um, so they were like, you're a young man at the party. You got your Clamato at the bar. Already, I'm, already I'm out. Yeah. Uh, and then 
they were like, you put it down for just a moment, and then this girl, she mistakenly picks up your Clamato, and she takes it. And then there's like all this action about like you have to follow her around, you duck somebody, you walk around the guy, you like deftly move, and then you finally get back to the girl and you give her that look and you're just like, it's my Clamato, and you guys like connect. Oh, um, Clamatos? Yes. And so I did it. I told you I was already in a bad mood. I, I did it really crappily. I will own that. Um, <laughs> we love a self, like, what is the it word of it? It sucked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they were like, all right, let's try it again. I did it again. I just was not feeling it. And the guy behind the camera goes, and he stops the tape, and he goes like, look, I just don't believe that you want the Clamato back. And so I looked at him, and I said, honestly, it's because I don't. I can't understand any human being on Earth who would order a Clamato, this is the most Jeff thing let alone wants to chase it down. Not just because it's a Clamato, but somebody just took my drink and I don't know him and I'm trying to get my drink back. Yeah. On top of that, it's clam juice and tomato juice. <laughs> I can't think of an actor short of Daniel Day-Lewis who could believably pull off wanting, I said all of this, wanting a Clamato. In fact, my motivation as an actor is I'm thrilled that she took it away and I'm disgusted by her Wait, because it's in her mouth right now. You've told me this story a few times and it's still funny to me. And the thing is, what you don't know maybe about commercial auditions is that like the Clamato people are in the other room, like the client is watching it. So I just reamed them and they all just stood there and they were just very upset and they're like, let's just try it one more time. And then they I- They let you do it again? Because there's somebody else in there who had to do it. Oh. I ruined somebody's life. Um, moral of the story is that if you like Clamato, you already like it. There's no advertisement that's going to convince you if you're on the fence. Like, I was thinking about clam juice, now I'm in. Did you're you either ever, in or out. Did you ever see the commercial? Who no, I didn't Daniel see it. Daniel Day-Lewis got it. It's true. It was uh, uh, the late Philip Seymour Hoffman, actually, and it was brilliant. Oh, my gosh. Um, commercials, you guys. See you next time. And auditions Yay. in general, right? Oh, yeah. It's real fun. Jeff is, like, a acting teacher for comedy, so he has to actually, like, run auditions a lot. It, honestly, if you guys want to hear more auditions horror stories, I feel like we could do a whole series. I don't teach what I was just talking about. We aspire to be better. So, oh, yeah. See you in class. No, you're a hero. Um, well, I mean, I'm done. Oh, Courtney, look how happy she is. Um, I am done folding, so I guess that's it for now. I'm trying to think if there's, like, one more, like, topper of, like, bad auditions. I think, like... The two that I told you were ones that like stick out in my brain the most. I have like glimpses of other ones, uh, but those were like the most like visibly uh, active ones where I was like, oh, um, but this is all to say, no matter how many bad auditions, bad interviews, bad moments you have, life goes on and everything's okay, <laughs> truly. You just need to like, Take a moment, assess the situation, and remember that, like, nothing is that important. So, I guess that's it. That's it for now. If you guys want to see more, like I said, let me know in the comments below. And or let me know what story time you guys want to uh, hear next. I love you all so much, and uh, thanks for hanging. See you next time. Bye.